Conference, it's a great pleasure to be here in Birmingham. This city, with its great industrial past, has strong links with the Royal Navy, despite being 75 miles from the sea. Three of our nation's great ships have proudly borne the name Birmingham. Those ships have won five battle honours, and today we continue that proud tradition. I'm pleased to announce that we will be naming one of our Type 26 global combat ships, HMS Birmingham. I inherited a Ministry of Defence that had been brilliantly manned by my predecessors, Liam Fox, Philip Hammond and Sir Michael Fallon. My thanks goes to them for building such an effective force. Today, Mark Lancaster, Tobias Elwood, Stuart Andrew, Freddie Howe and our PPSs, Will Quince, Jack Lepresti and Trudy Harrison are a fantastic defence team. And a special thanks must also go to Philip Dunn MP for the great work that he has done on doing a report about prosperity and defence and how important it is to this country. Since I joined, since I joined the MOD in November, it's been quite a year. There have been ups, and there have been downs. There have been times when I've spoken a little bluntly. But then us Yorkshire folk have never been known for our subtlety. But this year, there have been challenges abroad and at home, with our nation's enemies testing our preparedness and our resolve. When I visit the troops in Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia and around the world, I see firsthand the passion and commitment and dedication of our people. You cannot help but be in awe of the challenges they face, and we owe them a great debt. Today, I want to speak to you about caring for those people who have served about the young people who've been inspired by our armed forces, and about what our armed forces are doing every single day to keep us safe at home. As Conservatives, we all believe that we should care for everyone in society, especially those who are most vulnerable. We want to look after all of those in the services, including those who suffer from chronic conditions mental health issues and disability. So today, I'm pleased to announce a new support network for them. We want the families and loved ones who support their partner in services to have every chance to succeed. So I'm pleased to announce a new scheme to help service personnel's partners find the jobs that they want. And alongside this, will provide more training and support and educational opportunities for the armed forces. And when the time comes, when the time comes for our people and they choose to move on, we will help them to continue to achieve their true potential. A new veterans transition policy will deliver this. We will help service leavers manage their finances, gain the right qualifications for the workplace, and help them find housing. We will set them up for success because they deserve it. And more than this, we want to celebrate everything that they have done to keep our families and communities safe. So we'll introduce the new Veterans ID card for all service leavers. It will give them the recognition that they deserve and help them, if ever they need it, to seek support for health, housing or work. Conference, 
This is about making sure we look after our service personnel from the moment they join, whilst they serve, and after they leave. As Conservatives, we understand that everyone should have the opportunity, the opportunity to succeed in life regardless of background or gender. If I can just tell you a little bit about what I mean. Recently, I went to a cadet unit in West Bromwich. The head teacher told me that the young people who had joined the cadets were at first reluctant to wear the naval uniforms at school. Two weeks later, they were all proudly wearing their uniforms. They're proud to belong to something bigger than themselves. On Friday, visiting a local cadet unit here in Birmingham at Aston University Engineering Academy, the young cadet flight sergeant who showed me round said to me, the being part of a cadet, being part of a cadet was about being part of a family. He was building friendships, gaining confidence, a sense of adventure and having fun. And thanks to the Conservatives in government, there are now 170 more cadet units and currently 43,000 cadets in schools. I want to build on this. I want to give even more young people the opportunity to join the cadets. So today I'm setting a new ambition to increase the number of cadets in our schools from 43,000 to 60,000 cadets. And, and each year we will celebrate our cadets with a new National Cadet Week. This will be a chance, a chance for us all to come together to see everything our young people gain from the cadets. We teach them new skills, new skills that are vital for succeeding in today's world. We're being savvy online and protecting against cyber attacks is essential. So I'm pleased to launch a new cyber security training program for our cadets. This program has been designed with GCHQ and the National Cyber Security Center 2,000 cadets a year will be trained in cybersecurity. Earlier today, I had a phone call from Brandon, and he said he would like a couple of places for people to be sent on it himself. Um, but conference, we are doing this because we want to teach our young people the skills, the skills they need to succeed in today's world. This investment in cadets is an investment in the future of our young people, but equally, conference, is an investment in all of our futures. This Conservative Party understands the value of our armed forces more than any other party. It understands that it is they that keep us safe. We know that we have the very best in the world, they can react rapidly, taking the fight to the most capable of enemies, whether by land, sea, air, cyber, or space. They can deploy and use complex weapons, and they maintain the ultimate guarantee of our safety, the nuclear deterrent. Every day of every year, our armed forces are serving around the world with 10,000 personnel on 30 different operations in 23 different countries, and over 20,000 of our people constantly held at high readiness. We're a leader in NATO, where we meet the pledge to spend a minimum of 2% of our GDP on defense. Earlier this year, it was thanks to the Royal Navy that Britain was the first nation to enforce United Nations maritime sanctions against North Korea. We have seen HMS Sutherland and HMS Argyle, alongside our allies, active in promoting global Britain, upholding the rules-based international order, and protecting our rights to sail in international waters in the South China Sea. 
for the first time this week, state-of-the-art lightning jet fighters took off from the deck of HMS Queen Elizabeth, the world's most advanced aircraft carrier. conference, it was our armed forces that cleaned up the nerve agent after the attack in Salisbury. And this Conservative Party understands the importance of our armed forces. That's why we launched the Modernising Defence Programme earlier this year, to make sure that our armed forces can protect us now and into the future. It's about having the right armed forces to protect your children, to protect my children, to protect our nation into the future. And that is why we will continue to invest. This year, we unveiled our new lethal, sophisticated jet fighter concept, Tempest. In March, the Prime Minister committed an extra £600 million to protect our nuclear deterrent. And we continue to invest in our Royal Navy and our Royal Marines. Combined, they have a glorious past, seemingly achieving the impossible. Whether that was seizing the Rock of Gibraltar over 300 years ago, or more recently, seizing the Al Four Peninsula in Iraq, to deliver the seemingly impossible. They need to be able to bring the fight from sea to land. As such, I'm happy to confirm that I will be protecting the vital landing platforms, HMS Albion and HMS Bulwark. We need them. We need them, the Royal Marines need them, in order to be able to continue to do what we ask of them to do. The armed forces protect our prosperity and our security. Something the leader of the opposition fails to understand. Think about it, conference. Which is the scarier thought? Trusting Jeremy Corbyn with your prosperity or trusting Jeremy Corbyn with your security? Personally, I don't fancy either. Our forces give us so much. I don't know about you, but in July, I remember watching the fly past over London as the Royal Air Force celebrated its 100th year Tens of thousands of people came to see it. But they also came out to say thank you. Thank you for everything that the Royal Air Force has continued to do in its 100-year history. It made us all feel so incredibly proud to be British. And this year, this year on the 100th anniversary of the Great War, we should remember the sacrifice of those who have paid the ultimate price to give us the freedoms that we enjoy today. It was in the 1980s, in the 1980s, where Margaret Thatcher ignited the flame of freedom, liberty and hope across Eastern Europe. Today, it is our duty to ensure that that flame continues to burn. We have always and will always stand by our friends and NATO allies as they have so often stood with us in the face of increasing threats. We will not just talk about our values, but we as a nation will defend our values. And we will not let the Kremlin rewrite the outcome of the Cold War. But conference, let's be clear. The, challenge, the challenges that we face are growing. Iran is increasingly dangerous. North Korea has nuclear weapons. And there is a blurring of boundaries as our enemies operate in the grey zone 
with cyber attacks and fake news. One of the greatest threats that we face today is Russia. Two weeks ago, I stood on the front line in Ukraine. I saw the devastation caused by Russian artillery shells and missiles as they tried to seize territory which is not theirs. Beyond Ukraine, in the Arctic and high north, Russia is increasing their military presence. As the ice melts, new shipping routes emerge and the significance of a region increases. As highlighted by my colleague Julian Lewis and the Defence Select Committee, we need to protect our national interests. Russia is increasing their military activity in the Arctic, with more submarines operating increasingly under the ice, with ambitions to build over 100 facilities in the Arctic, and with a reopening of old Soviet bases. To deal with this, we will be launching our new defense Arctic strategy. Our Poseidon aircraft submarine hunters based in Lossimouth will track Russian submarines. They'll keep us safe at home and assist our NATO allies. And we will step up our training with our Norwegian friends. With 800 Marines training each year in Norway, our submarines will be operating underneath the ice shelf in support of them. And the Royal Air Force will protect the skies over the Baltic and Iceland. It is our range of cutting-edge capabilities that makes Great Britain one of the world's leading military powers. Beyond the high north and Arctic, we must be ready, ready to deal with the threats as they emerge. We're increasing our British points of presence around the globe. We will not close our key facilities in Germany. Instead, we will keep them open and forward base army units there. This year, in the Gulf, we opened the first naval base east of Suez since the 1960s and we will permanently base mine hunters and one of our frigates there. They are projecting British influence and protecting Britain's interests. They make us a truly global Britain. Conference. <laughs> Conference, I am proud proud of the work that our armed forces do. They are world leading and made up of inspiring men and women. Our armed forces have a proud history, protecting the values we hold so dear and of keeping us all safe. But we are at a crossroads. This is the time for us to step forward. We are proud of our nation's history. Now we must be confident of our nation's future. We are the party that understands that it is our armed forces who always give us so much, who represents our values as a nation, who never pause or hesitate to come for our, to our defence when we need it most. So conference, we Conservatives prize our armed forces. They defend us, so we will defend them. They... They protect us, so we will protect them. It is the Conservative and Unionist Party that will give Great Britain the confidence, the belief and the hope to take our nation to ever greater heights. It is us, it is all of us, who will build a great and global Britain. Thank you.